Hello. Does that work? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I think I will wait one more minute just to make sure everyone's in the right. If you're in the right room, I. This is planning for Drupal 8.1x and 8.2x and our future together. Hello, I'm Tim Plunkett. Hi, Tim. Thank you. I'm a senior engineer at Acquia. I'm a core developer, and I maintain a bunch of stuff in core. And I'm currently focused on D8 panels, which is not in core yet. <laughs> uh, so my basic premise here is that core is awesome, and the more stuff in core, the more people will realize that Drupal is awesome, and that, you know, small core and hiding everything in contrib is backwards, you know, and uh, not conducive. So if you disagree with me on this, uh, wait till the end, but I hope this entire thing is predicated on the idea that core should be bigger. So to begin, Semver, semantic versioning, changes everything. Everything we've ever known about core and the core workflow and uh, the way we add features and change core is completely different now. Uh, in Drupal 8, we can no longer make any backwards compatibility breaking changes. We can only add new features. Uh, we can only add new features now in future versions of Drupal 8, so 8.1.0, 8.2.0, until Drupal 9 happens. Um, and also now we're going to, as per Dries' keynote, we're switching to a more predictable release cycle. So we're just going to release you know, 8.1, we're gonna pick a date and it's just gonna happen. We're not gonna wait for us to rewrite everything from scratch and add 30 modules. Uh, so the, the biggest thing to me about the uh, Drupal 8 cycle has been the contributors. So of the top 50 contributors, only 35 of them were really even barely active in during Drupal 7. And all, 20 of the top 50 had zero commits at all. They didn't even touch Drupal 7. And of those top 50 contributors, 45 of them are still contributing within the past week. Um, and over a five year period, that's pretty good. Uh, those, those contributors are also familiar with, contri uh, you know, the core contributors are familiar with contrib modules um, because very many of them are active contrib module maintainers. Uh, which gives them kind of insight into how things might go in the future. And I hope there's a bunch of them here and you're going to help me with this presentation. My request to you is please, once, I mean, well, Drupal 8.0 is going to come out and we're all going to go on vacation. And then we come back, we have to keep working. Um, we can't just, you know, rest on our laurels and, and you know, <laughs> there's a lot of work left to do. Uh, my plan, my hope, is that we collaborate. We continue to collaborate in the way that we've collaborated in the core queue. Um, you know, just because I maintain this one module and everyone else maintains their own modules doesn't mean we should work in isolation. It's very important, like the, you know, the benefits of working as a, as a team cannot be stressed more. Um, Dries mentioned even with these, uh, the new feature branches that we're gonna have, um, he said cross-functional teams get the best results. We've seen it in the multilingual initiative that if you have a bunch of people with different, you know, approaches, you can the code you're going to create is going to be that much better than just one person working solo. Um, I think that contrib is going to be very important to like figure out how to use all these new APIs in conjunction with each other and uh, it, you know iterate on what core is done and take it to the next level. And I think that it's really important for us to share code between modules. So, for example. The, which I'll get to later, layout plugin is a module that allows um, you know, a user to provide a layout. Uh, there's really three main modules that you use in Contrib to do layouts, context, display suite, and panels. And all three of them use different code. But in Drupal 8, display suite and panels use the same exact code to do their layouts. So you only have to write one kind of, you only have to learn one layout engine, and everything uses it. Um, and then that's going to be something we're going to try to put in core. 
So the more we collaborate and contrib and you know, distill the best practice, the more code we can put into core, which will then make writing contrib modules even easier. You can count on C tools. So if you've ever used C tools in any version of Drupal, it's just a bunch of stuff. It doesn't really do anything by itself. But you, I guarantee you, you've used a module that depends on C tools. Uh, but of those 11 things that C tools happen to do in Drupal 7, nine of those are in core. Uh, so C tools is pretty empty as of today. Uh, I think the only two things that didn't go in were the form wizard and the like user generated like user UI entered CSS writing directly to a file. Those are the only two APIs in C tools that aren't in core as of today. But the D8 C tools modules are already starting to be uh, things are already starting to be added to it to kind of facilitate the next thing. So, for example, um, stuff around plugins. We have the new plugin API that used to be in C tools. It's now in core. Uh, but there's extra things that that we could have done in core that are being done in C tools until such a time it may or may not go in. Uh, yeah, I already mentioned this. Put my slides in the wrong order. So. <laughs> We, uh, the, but the main thing which I didn't mention is the well-scoped feature sets. So if, you're, if we're going to be working on new features, trying to add them to core, it can't just be like add views module to core because there's no way that a 2.5 megabyte patch is going in at this point. Um, it's really hard for one person to kind of define a, a set of features, and it really helps when there's a, a team of people, that, especially ones that build sites. Um, and that really helps. Not all core developers build sites anymore. It's really useful when, when there's someone who actually uses these modules on real live production sites uh, to tell you exactly what is really important. So this is the fun part. What should we work on? That's, that's what I got. <laughs> Blank space. So there's a bit.ly. DrupalCon EUR, which is the Twitter handle, 81X. Everyone open your laptops or phones. I'll wait. <laughs> what, the internet? <laughs> so if you go to that, we're literally going to spend the rest of the session actually writing this stuff up. Yeah, sorry. Uh, DrupalCon EUR 81X. Now I have to figure out how to get Pirate Pad to... There we go. <laughs> features. Everything that we're going to add from here between now and Drupal 9, what do you got? Well, okay, so Pirate Pad doesn't work on iPhones. Sorry, everyone. Pad is full. So I want to, excuse me? The pad, pad is full. All right, we'll just yell things and we can type them in. And if people see. Use you know, the microphone well, to make suggestions. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Okay, everyone. Let's see. Did someone delete my? Th no, I can't scroll. There we go. So I want to talk real quick while everyone's typing about layouts. So uh, the concept of layouts uh, is kind of split into three different things. So the actual like plumbing, the API for layouts is uh, right now in a module called the Layout Plugin. As I said before, it's used by Display Suite and Panels. You can go download it. It is stable. It hasn't really changed even for you know API changes in core. It didn't even really break it. It, it works. It's on production sites now. And it could be very well the first feature added to 8.1. Uh, the other two parts of it are the layout UI. So, you know, actually seeing the layout on your admin site and being able to drag things back and forth. And the, the final part, which I don't even know if we want. Has anyone ever used the panel's flexible layout builder? Show hands. Uh, like a dozen people. How many people liked it? No hands. How many people looked at the code it generated and then really, really hated it? Everyone. Uh, yeah, so I don't even know if we want to code that. It could be fun. It could be its own module. I don't think that's going into core. The other thing, I just put media just because I know that was one of the big you know, killer features that didn't really make it into 8.0. Um, I will leave it to the media team to kind of help define what those things are. I uh, hope to turn this into a blog post and kind of set the, set the stage for what we're going to work on. Um, so now let me look and see what we got. Editorial workflow. So... There's Workbench, if you're a D7 site builder, and that's about it. 
Anything else anyone used for G7 work, workflow, editorial workflow? CPS. CPS. Is that SPS and CPS? No, CPS is the new one. That's Earl. Yeah. So CPS is the is pretty awesome. Um, it's very, very recent, and it came out since I last built a website. So I can't speak to it personally. Um, I think, yeah, so if you could type, thank you. Uh, I think those two, kind of those teams are hopefully going to figure some stuff out. I know that uh, some of the Palantiri and um, some people from Tag1 have talked about where Workbench is going to go. And that's the thing. We don't need to have a D8 version of Workbench. It could be called anything we want. Um, just because you know, it was called something and we had three competing solutions in D7 doesn't mean we need to do that. We can have better namespaces for our modules. Let's see what else we got. A delightful content authoring experience. What, D8's not delightful enough? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's been a lot of changes to the D8 content authoring experience. Preview is actually like a real preview this time. You know, it's in two columns. You have some, you have a WYSIWYG. Um, but there is a lot to be done. We're not quite on the same level as, as WordPress or any of those other competing solutions. Peter? And even. Something we're missing is actually, or we're going to need is a lot of user testing. Because my... It's fine, I'll repeat it. Okay. And yeah, hopefully it'll get typed in. So we need end user testing. We need a lot of it. So that was one of my favorite slides from Dries' keynote, was the one about how we shouldn't just do our usability testing every four years when we're done. It should be built into the workflow. And he didn't call it out specifically, but when, when he said, uh, cross-functional teams, I was sitting next to a UX researcher who was like jumping out of her chair with excitement because you know you don't need to be able to write code to contribute and if we're able to loop in people um, earlier into the and build them into the flow of, of working on these feature sets we'll have much much better stuff and we won't be, have to go every three years to the University of Minnesota and want to stab ourselves um, I know for, for, just for example, the panels team right now, we have you know the requisite crew of, of back-end people, but we've also been working with a UX designer and a front-end developer and like actual product owner, project manager, and it's really changed the way that we work on Contrib. Um, and we need to do that for all of this. Question? Yeah, there was la uh, yesterday there was a talk about um, CREP. It was about uh, create, read, uh, archive, and uh, purge. And I think that's also something that really should be in core. Yep. Uh, Did anyone write it down? We have a limit of 16 people. Yeah, that kind of. I didn't know that before I picked Pirate Pad. Oh, well. Because, um, for the people who don't know, it's about uh, when you delete content, uh, it still remains in Drupal, and you have to purge it. Um, so you can get a better audit trails uh, for applying to ISO standards, uh, for example, uh, but also um, to um, uh, the, the recycle bin, for example, uh, what's normal in uh, Joomla WordPress, but not in Drupal. When you delete something, it's really gone. Yeah, I agree. Um, and they, that, so that was uh, Dick Olson, right? I think he gave that talk. And he also gives his usual talk about how deploy module is amazing. Um, that would be another, I'm going to write that one down myself. Um, I think that, like, you know, it also deploy actually does have a good namespace. I'm like, whatever the thing was that was before deploy, whatever, uh, deploy would be great. If we could really, you know, re-architect it for, uh, on modern D8 principles and, and as I said, include, you know, some UX testing along the way. Yesterday I attended a session on Composer where they're trying to get those in. It seems like they're trying to get too much in in 8.0, and maybe that's an 8.1. Plus I've got some in Composer work that I need to integrate in with theirs that I think we can do better in 8.1. Yeah, I, interesting you mentioned Composer. It's not, since it's not actual, um, it's dev only, right? It's it's to, to pull in, in code, basically. It's not like a front end, you know, you, it's not user facing. Um, but it is very, very important. But I also think that our use of Composer of right now, everyone knows it's bad and it's wrong and it needs to be fixed. Well, I use Composer for site building on Project yeah, as a site and building. 7X, and okay, that right. stuff can, yeah. can move date, could be easier and better in 8X. Right, yeah. So the Composer Manager module tries to do some of that. But I think that um, we can improve that. We don't need to wait for 8.1, basically. Hopefully we can fix that like during the 8.0, you know, we could... It can be. It can start tomorrow. It's not an API change to use Composer and fix Composer. If we could, 
Right. Well, yeah. I think it's categorized as a bug, so it could be fixed like any time. But yeah, it's very important. Um, okay, so yeah, we did. So autosave, I think autosave is really cool. Other thing I want to put on here is the, so we have previews for nodes now. As If anyone's looked at Drupal 8 recently and hit the preview button, it's pretty great. But it's hard-coded for nodes. I mean, there's a lot of other things we want to preview, like comments. Um, and any now that you... Uh, now that writing entity types is super easy, uh, well, in theory, uh, compared to Drupal 7, it'd be nice to be able to, you know, stop abusing content types for everything and write, you know, custom entity types, but you'd want to have preview for that. So, so a preview all for all other thingies is a, is a very important to me. So we got, uh, automated testing. So we had a very late valiant effort to put, uh, like Behat and Mink based tests into core. And it, like, there's some of the plumbing in place, but we're not there yet. And that's, I mean, there's so many, it's like, you know, you're not allowed to fix any PHP bugs without test coverage. It's just a rule. Every time you got to fix something, you need a test for it. If it's a, if it's a visual regression, no test coverage, just commit it. Just hope, hope for the best. Hope that, you know, that enough people looked at it, enough different browsers, and enough different configurations. So that is going to be huge, um, especially if we continue iterating on things like <coughs> content editing and editorial workflow. We need, need, need front-end testing for that. Um, and uh, automated performance testing, I know there's work being done on that right now. And that would be a killer feature. Yeah, Breeder? Um, yes, we had a discussion today about entity stuff. And we're going to do it similar as you plan the C tools. So we're going to have the entity module in, Drupal, in Contrib and are going to put stuff in there and then work on getting it into core over time. That will include like better u default user interfaces, like revisions and possibly also preview. So that should be the place to work on everything related to entity. Awesome, that sounds great. <coughs> okay, so automatic core upgrade for small sites. This is an interesting one. Um, I know, what was it, was it WordPress or no? Who got recently? Yeah, and everyone just lost it when all their sites got fixed for them, and then all of their code broke. And so that's 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 what I don't have personal opinions on because I think that's scary. But I know a lot of re people really really want it, and but we need to do it right, or we're just going to look so stupid. I mean, that just happened in like the biggest, most prominent CMS that everyone else knows about, and they got it wrong. And if we get it wrong too, you know. It's gonna. It, we're just gonna. It's gonna be embarrassment. So, Peter. That seems like a hosting provider problem. Right? As an employee of a hosting provider, I'm sure you think that. <laughs> <laughs> I work there too. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think. You know, I mean, honestly, it's something that maybe the hosting providers iterate on, and then we figure it out. It's it, that's like you could be the contrib of that. Um, because running a, like the automatic will fix your stuff for you as an optional contrib module doesn't really make sense as much. You know, you have to know, if you have to know about it in advance, it's not going to help you. So more usable fields UI. So this is something I haven't been in on any of the discussions. I don't even know if it was talked about this DrupalCon, but there's been a lot of talk about a more generic, um, like data modeling UI. Uh, taking the field UI kind of to the next level and just beyond the idea of attaching fields to, to entity types and, and there. I think that's really, really interesting. I know there's a lot of people in this community that can talk about content strategy and all that. And I'd really love, that would be another easy way to get non-coders or people who aren't doing code-based work at that time to work alongside developers and improve, improve Drupal. Uh, REST support, eh, yeah, I mean, it's we have better rest support than we did before, but we could have better rest support in every release. Rest, you know, and not just rest. I mean, we use rest as kind of shorthand for all of that and services and everything else. And there will always be the services module, um, but maybe the services mo parts of the services module could go into core as part of you know improving our rest API. Some equivalent for features overrides. Who put that in there? Okay, so who here has built a site using features? Who has enjoyed building a site using features? More importantly, who has used a distribution that used features and then had to maintain it over a long period of time? 
So that's why I did my most recent job. And features overrides makes it less terrible. Um, I don't really think anyone knows uh, yet what that's going to be like with CMI. Um, there's we ha you know we, we haven't really gotten our feet wet with that. So, right. So yeah, the config module provides a UI for exporting individual single parts of configuration, as well as just dumping your entire site and importing certain parts of the configuration. And you can use it as a developer to see what you're doing, what's been changed and whatnot. Um, but there, there's still no, like, I don't know that how distributions are going to use CMI properly because there's no way for them, once, once their distribution is installed, writing upgrade hooks for that, saying they want to change default values is going to be very tricky. I don't know how they're going to do that. So overriding that on the fly or, you know, any of the different mechanisms is going to be very interesting. Um, yeah, it's... Sorry, yeah, can you use the mic? Yes. Uh, there's already some uh, merge command in Drush for uh, yes. config, and there's also um, how it's called, config update module Yes. that uh, allows to change default config settings on the fly so that could be used as a right. kind of override thing yeah and i think we're, that's going to be one of the things where we're going to end up with four solutions and then we're going to have to try to figure out what the best one is um, and that's the kind of thing i mean we don't know how long each you know the time will be between eight one or eight zero and eight one and eight one and eight two yet um, is it going to be okay so it's six months between each one um, and we don't know how many features can go into eight one. Depends on how eight zero goes. So, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of time uh, to to kind of get this right. But the overall message I want to send to you is like, let's talk to each other, um, and we also we kind of get a fresh start. All these modules have to be ported, and sure, everyone's going to do straight ports because they want the thing to work yesterday. But keeping an eye towards the future and porting while talking to what your competitor module competitors. That's air quotes for the recording. Uh, you know, to, to, to come with the best solution. I mean, most of the modules out there, except for the ones that represent third parties that have like business interests, most of the, these modules are just, it's free code. Like no one has, like other than pride and like the time they invested in it, there's not, there shouldn't be that much attachment to a certain approach. If, if we can finally distill the best approach, uh, we should work together to, to do that. GraphQL, yeah, that got a huge shout out in the keynote and the Dries note. Um, and I think that is something that's very important to the future of Drupal. Um, I, I'm not going to say it any better than Dries did. I don't know the best way to, to kind of integrate it into core, but I think there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff we can do. Uh, Verdier mentioned the NDA API improvements, uh, which is great. <laughs> permissions management and the permissions page not sad. My old boss used to have a bed sheet made that was a printout basically of the permissions <laughs> checkboxes and and yeah and Morton has a pillow of it uh, that would make me sad uh, yeah no I think I think I don't know how we're gonna do that but, but sure I mean it's it's one of the first pages you go to as a, as a novice site builder and or you know not even a site builder but like a site maintainer it's like oh someone wanted permission to do this thing load the page five minutes later ah like what happened so we really need to work on that. I don't know who's going to do it. The, the, in Drupal 7, you have fast permission access who improves it a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, there's UI-based ones, too, um, just like the permissions filter module and stuff. But I think we need, uh, I mean, we can't break APIs, but we need to, to think of it more than just like re-theming the, the permissions page. Although that might also wait for 9. I know there's been talk of, of re writing the permissions API to be hierarchical, which would be really cool. Um, but that's that can't happen in any one. Um, another one our own permission is like some of the, most of the D7s are like global, like the parts using global permission. And uh, when you work on like a big site, uh, you cannot really give site configuration permissions to everyone. Uh, you may need it for a specific content type or a specific, you know, like, even we don't even think about those things if it's a small site. So we end up creating, you know, custom modules or, you know, node-specific admin pages. I think DA have use, but a few other places we don't really have an option other than adding menu alter or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done with that. 
path out on token UI and core. Yeah, I mean, we have token support. Um, we could have the token UI. I mean, it's been, I think it's being rewritten right now for Drupal 8. I mean, I know the module is, but I think the token browser is being rethought. Uh, and, you know, it's it's crashed my site a bunch of times. Every time I try to open the token browser, it's just like, there goes my Chrome page. Um, so I, that there's been a lot of work over the years to try to, to mitigate that problem. I don't know what we're going to do, but we can't put it in core like it is in contrib right now. Path Auto, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like if Dave Reed had two less kids and three more of himself, we'd have Path Auto in core. Um, or, you know, just people to help work on it. You know, everyone sticks to what they know, kind of, but this is kind of, the D8's the brave new world of, of awesome, and anyone can kind of jump in and take ownership of something and just be the new driving force behind a module or an effort or initiative. Covert, convert. Convert most admin UI configurable. I don't know what that means. Someone explain it. Oh, sure. I'm gonna, do you want, is it yours, DJ? Yeah, that's that's my. Uh, it's a, it's an idea. I think CHX started initially. So, you know, currently we are creating all the config forms uh, and saving them. Um, so it is possible if we can. If you can use the config schema to generate the oh, so like config inspector module, but for the form half for form as well as if you can. So that's one part of it. So simple okay. configurations using route or somewhere, you can easily just specify the path and it just generate the config form for you. Uh, it's much cooler than the D seven admin settings form. Right. It become, uh, and the second part is if we can, if we can make a uh, use of type config entity, then. We can create a views of views, also oh. content types of views. So again, it's back to the place like a, if you have an enterprise site, you don't want to display all the content types in, for a, for a one uh, you know content site builder. You want to provide them set of content types they can manage. So you can have a different set of pages and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Right now in in D seven you can I mean sorry in D eight uh, you can only make views of content entities, so things like nodes, taxonomies, and users, things that are stored in SQL, things that have fields. Um, config entities, which are stored in YAML sometimes, uh, cannot be displayed in views, and mostly because no one is brave enough to write the back end for views. Um, it could be done, and it would be awesome. I recently tried to hack together like a happy, so I could make a view of blocks, and it was like three days of pain, and uh, it would be really awesome if someone stepped up and worked on that. I know just today someone was working on kind of the reverse of like a JSON B based storage of, of all entities. Um, but yeah, you have to deep dive, uh, deep, dive deep into views APIs to make that happen, but it would be pretty great. Uh, snowman, I'm gonna pretend someone didn't put that in there. Default content and core that almost happened secretly. It almost happened. Uh, Previous Next mostly worked on a default content module for D8. Uh, it's on GitHub and it works pretty well as far as I know. Um, I think that that needs a lot of input from the community and from usability and accessibility and performance and all that stuff. Uh, I think it does go along with content migration and deploy module and all that. And we can look to, to see how those things can work in concert. Yeah, so the Tor module is kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, we added a thing using the Joyride jQuery plugin to be able to like tour around an admin UI or any UI to learn how to use it. And I think we have one, and it was the one that we added initially like a year, two years ago, which is how to use the views UI, which is great, but we really need to to actually add those tours. I don't think that that can go into ape anything, really. I mean, it's not a feature. And that could also live in Contrib forever too. I mean, it's it's that's the other thing though is it, it, since it's a tour for new people, you kind of want it in core when you install it for the first time because how are you going to know to go look for downloadable modules? Crap, we talked about XML sitemap question mark question mark. I don't know. I mean, it's cool. It works pretty well. I don't know how much it needs other than a straight port. I don't know if it needs to be in core. Beauty. Make the first thing anyone sees beautiful. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I know there was a lot of work done, or no, well, 
yeah, there was a lot of work done on the installer. Um, it got better, but only like incrementally better instead of being amazingly better. And you still get dumped into like empty Bardic. Welcome to your site name. Um, we, you know, the landing page after you first install. I, I'm assuming that means, by the way, for right after installation, like the first one thing anyone sees. You only have one chance. Yeah, exactly. You only have one chance, as was said from the audience. Um, yeah, I don't. I think that could uh, be very interesting, and it's as also very multidisciplinary. Um, it's, there's some technical changes that need to be made to the installer, but most of it's just deciding what what to do, um, and that's not something that we can. You know, one person can decide, but someone needs to propose some ideas and get the ball rolling. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Hook update N. <sighs> Hook update N is just changed recently again. Uh, update deploy. I've never used this module, but it sounds cool. So whoever put that plus one. Yeah, thanks. More llamas. Oh, this is just to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know enough from Drupal 8, but is redirecting core? No. Maybe that's a good one for uh, search engine optimization. Um, yeah, I'm surprised people didn't put it. Meta tag. Um, yeah, another day read or two more Damien McKenna's or you know, and a partridge in a pear tree. And I had another one, uh, HTML mail question mark. <laughs> and that's more. HTML mail? Yeah. Ooh. Maybe, maybe is not. Is Drupal Mail still in core? I assume it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's yeah. more the expectation from the customer that uh, a, a meal looks beautiful. Uh, and uh, it's a pain in the ass now to get it done, right, in Drupal yeah. 7. Um, so we'll just put MailChimp in core, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that will be best. <laughs> Does anyone, so we've talked, uh, thanks for sharing all these ideas. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on... Other than what what Perdue said about how to how to make this all happen, um, other than just like starting coding, um, any thoughts there? I think that so Friday is the sprints, and I'm going to be personally working on panels for D8, uh, but I think we can pretty easily get together a bunch of people to talk about some of these. Um, I know there's going to be people working on OG, and Workbench, and rules. We didn't even mention rules because rules is already being taken care of. So, yeah, Jess? So I'd just like to suggest that if you have a plan or a dream or a thing that you want to put in core, make an actual plan as in an issue in the Drupal core queue. If it's a thing that you think should be in core, there's now a, uh, an issue category called plan that got added at the last DrupalCon. So make a core issue and says, media in core and say, I so-and-so think this is a great idea and then reach out to all your other friends and, and enemies who care about media and say, help me plan a plan because that's the first step. Yeah, I, there's, I know there's talk um, about sort of release management and planning these feature branches. It's all new to everyone. And there's going to be, I guess, guidelines, Jess, that are going to, or Angie could confirm, like how to properly propose these sorts of things. And I wish that had been finished formulating so I could have shared it with you. But Angie's just going to talk instead. I'm going to try and talk. Yeah. I mean, we, we, uh, one of the concerns raised was like uh, people get an idea and they go nuts and they code it. And then they've been doing that for six months before we all find out that they've been doing that. And they come back and they're like, I did this thing. And we're like, oh, we don't want that thing actually. And then they feel really bad. So, yeah, I think what Jess said um, about making the plan first so there's visibility. And I don't know how detailed these plans need to be. I mean, to me, it's like, um, you know, we just need to, like, a list of issues, just like a normal meta issue, right? It's like a list of issues with some headings and what your idea is. Um, get that up to RTBC. And then ideally, one of the product managers, such as myself or Dries, would look that over and validate that, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, you say, I want to put Path Auto in core. This is how I want to do it. I need these back end changes made. I need these front end changes made. Um, here's the team that I've got available to work on this because we want cross functional teams. I think that we would totally look at that and be like, go. You know, um, if you want to replace the uh, toolbar with a uh, watch, 
um, we might want to think about that a little bit more. So, <laughs> so don't code that for right. nine months by yourself in a corner. Exactly. Don't do that. Give us visibility early and often, and that way we have the ability. I don't want to really gum everything up in a whole approval process on it be super lightweight. But on the other hand, I think it's good to get a check-in before you go completely nuts to make sure you're on the right track. And that's basically the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also playing around with this idea, and I, I don't know how into it Boyan and, and Lewis and other people are, but I would love to run monthly product manager meetings um, after 8.0 where um, we would do things on those meetings like uh, do a demo of stuff that just got into core or that is in progress because I would love to get early and often feedback from users on things that we're working on so that – we are not stuck every six months getting that feedback, or we could get it a lot more rapidly. Yeah. That gets to the user testing and things like that. Um, it would be an opportunity for us to review plans that have come in and make sure that we sign off on them, you know, um, that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't really know. This hasn't been fleshed out in any way, but I think the general idea is we want to prototype things as cheaply as possible before we get to writing actual code. We want to make sure that people have thought about how they want to get things into the core, kind of broken up into manageable chunks, to your point. And the best way to do that is to make a plan. And then we want some kind of consistency where what you're working on is also within the vision of what the core committers think is a good deal for this version of Drupal and just that everyone is sort of synced up. You know, yeah. but uh, but otherwise, I think yeah, absolutely. If you've got crazy ideas, let's get a plan together and we can talk about it. So, yeah. thanks, Angie. Right. Um, one of the things about that people kind of get nervous about with Big Core is performance. Um, are there things in Drupal eight that help set a performance threshold or budget um, to kind of keep Eat fast. Yes. Well, so there's testing, but are, will we as a community decide how fast? Like, okay, so we want to yeah. add this thing, either make it faster or take something else out. Well, I, yes and no. I mean, so you know, individual right now, individual changes are pr- profiled when we says, so oh, does this regress it? Is it? You know, a ten percent gain or is a ten percent loss. Um, what can we? Do? What and then you have to identify what it is and get it down to it, like a two percent gain or two percent loss within margin of error. Uh, I think automated performance testing will help with that. But also, so there's brand new cache everything in Drupal eight. Um, the cacheability stuff. Wim Lears and Fabian did a talk about, or Wim did a talk about it today. I think so. You can look up the session for that. Um, that kind of fixes all of our problems in theory, maybe. We don't know yet. Um, the other thing is, you know, a lot of these, well, not, maybe not a lot, but maybe half of these are just modules. They're just modules. You turn them on, you turn them off, and then we have to decide whether or not to put them in the standard profile or not. Some of them are like changes to the way Core does things, maybe in a not API breaking way or not. Um, and those kind of always on things would need to be scrutinized more. Um, note, we don't have automated performance tests in Core, and I think that's going to be one of like the first things we do you know that all this testing stuff the front end testing and the the performance testing are the like number one focus because those two things allow us to do all of these other things better and we want to do all this right that's the whole point of this talk is let's do it right let's not just write a bunch of crap code by ourselves and do it seven times and then have site builders or you know consumers of drupal modules have no idea what to download That's about it as far as uh, my thoughts. Anyone else have any other questions or something they want to bring up? Do they disagree with anything said and strong and, uh-oh. 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 God, where's coming? Now, I just wanted to point out that we are not shutting down Contrib yet. So <laughs> <laughs> it is still possible to write some of these things in Contrib. So you can you can start out and contrib port modules, um, test them with users, use them on sites, get live feedback, etc. All of that stuff. Um, so you don't need to open a plan issuing core to start working on some of these things. But if you went away for nine months and worked on porting some module to to aid and everything worked and everybody liked it, it may still not match the requirements that people want to see in core. So it makes sense to um, to keep that in mind. 
but it's entirely possible to to keep innovating in, in Contrib just as much as it was before. There's no requirement Absolutely. for it to happen in core. 100%. Thanks. That's a very good point. Yeah, I think um, I'm personally just so focused on this, the work we've been doing on panels. It's a huge module. It needs a team. Like one person can't do it. Some of these modules um, are much smaller and much, or not smaller in code size, but just in scope and number of features and the functionality it provides. Um, and so that definitely applies there. But I, you know, even if you're working and only ever want it to be in contrib, I still think you should follow this, the, the pattern we've used in core um, of, of working with other people that know other things than you, um, especially since everyone's going to need help learning all the new Drupal 8 APIs. I mean, I think I learn everything, and then they add six more, and then I need to ask six people to explain it to me. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there, and the more people that learn it, every, the better everything will be. So. Anyone want to have the final say? All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll uh, try to get a blog post up to, to summarize all this. And I'll see you in the issue queues and on the sprints on Friday. So thanks a lot. <laughs>